I'm Christy Baldridge. I'm the Executive Director for Deport Community Action Foundation. Our main office is in Okmulgee, Oklahoma. I have um, our self-help housing program. Our main office is also in Okmulgee. And then we have our CACFP program, which acronyms I know are bad. Child Adult Care Food Program is located, our main office is in Morris. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of background. Like she said, I've known Billy for many years right after I moved to Oklahoma, um, moved to Oklahoma. And at that time, I worked for Oklahoma Police Department um, until I went on bed rest with the birth of my daughter and then my life got all turned around. So with that being said, right now, like I said, I work for Deport Community Action and that impacts all of you guys because we work for the mission, what is D4 Community Action? We have a mission of helping people and changing lives. That is what community action is. How many of you guys know D4? Have you ever worked with D4? Um, I'm finding as I work with the counties and the people in the counties, a lot of people have no idea what we do. And but you guys all work with people. You guys all work with people, whether you're teachers or work with churches or work have a business, own a business. Um, we have about 11 to 18 different programs at one time. Some of them are just seasonal. Um, some of them work all throughout the year. We have different times. We have 18 different contracts that we work with. They're either state, locally, or privately funded. I write all the grants that we have for the programs. And different funding sources, like I said, Oklahoma Department of Con Commerce, USDA, um, Oklahoma Natural Gas, Department of Energy. Um, some of them are some of them are funneled through the State Department of Education. It just depends, but we are all working with low-income people or extremely low-income people. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with our Child Adult Care Food Program. Those we work with tribally licensed or State Department uh, DHS licensed in-home daycares to reimburse them for the meals that they serve to those kids. So they're actually getting nutritious meals. Um, sometimes those are the only good meals that those kids get uh, throughout the day. We can reimburse two main meals and a snack, or two snacks and a main meal for those. So sometimes they might get breakfast, an AM snack, lunch, a PM snack, and a dinner in those daycares. And we reimburse those daycares for those uh, meals that they get. Sometimes those kids are there from five in the morning till 11 at night, and we can reimburse for those meals. Um, we do that statewide. That's the only program that Beatport has that we have statewide. Our main counties that we have are Okmulgee, Okfuskey, McIntosh, and Hughes. So we cover, hopefully, all of your area that you have. Um, I'm gonna start at the beginning. You guys hopefully all have your hand up. I kind of went off the grid and tell you guys all got this. Um, Deep Fork is defined and summed up by the promise of community action. Community action, there's 23 community actions in the state of Oklahoma. Community action changes people's lives, embodies the spirit of hope, improves community, and makes America a better place to live. Um, community action as a whole celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. Uh, and what's really good about Deep Fork Community Action, located right there in Okmulgee, is next year we're going to celebrate our 50th year. I think that that's pretty amazing. Um, and most people have no idea where we're even located. Our main office is right next to Kirby's Cafe, right there in Okmulgee on Main Street. Um, our mission at Deep Fork Community Action Foundation is to improve the quality of life for those in need and strengthen communities by providing an opportunity for growth for the future. So in every program we have, we make sure that we are meeting the mission of our agency. Um, like I said, the roots of Deep Fork, we started with just one county in 1966, and we've continued and added counties as we go. Like I said, the majority of our programs, we encompass those four counties, but our self-help housing program, we encompass seven counties. Our CACFP program, we encompass the entire state, and different other programs have different counties, and we're going to go over those, touch on them just real quickly, and I'll tell you what we can do for different people, and you've got brochures, and you'll be able to refer back to that, and I'll get you guys a personal card, and you'll have all the information you need by the time we get going, but I'm going to respect your time, and we'll run through that really quick. Um, first of all, again, the CACFP program, that's where we reimburse in-home daycares for the meals that we provide. Our self-help housing program, that's the one that everyone gets excited about. We actually build homes for people from solid square dirt. Um, 
we have income eligibility on the white brochure you guys have. It has the income eligibility for those programs um, in each county because the income eligibility is different for each county. Um, we can actually even help you guys get land. That's the one that has the really cool houses, house on the front. And that's actually a sample house that we just built. This is one we built last year on the front of this. Um, you guys can start, if you know somebody, hey, I know that they really need a home. Um, they can start simply by filling this out and mailing it in. Their new office is on Southwood Drive. We actually have a banner trailer. It's across the street from Terry's Muffler, kind of just right down from that donut shop on Wood Drive. The income eligibility, that is current income eligibility, and you'd never know it, but a two-person household in Okmulgee County, they just have to make under 32000 a year. Believe it or not, a lot of people in our area. <laughs> so the unique thing about this is it's a fixed, um, interest rate right now it ranges between one and three percent that's a really low interest rate and they work the people that are getting the home built they do 65 percent of the work on the home obviously with our construction supervisors standing there teaching them how to hang insulation how to do this how to do that um, and we work with the contractors getting them to do all the stuff but they might pick up the shingles they might do this and that works as their down payment on that home usually on move-in date it averages they might have anywhere between five and thirty thousand dollars of equity on move-in date, depending on their income. Um, that depends on their payment. They might get a subsidy for part of their payment. So that's an amazing program, and you guys have probably seen a lot of these houses in and around the area. So pretty amazing program. Our next program is the weatherization program. We get I get grants from Department of Energy, DHS, and then I have an ONG program. That is where we come. It's not a where we come and work on your home. It's not a home repair program, but it is a weatherization program. We come and make your home more energy efficient. We might replace doors, windows. Um, we might just weatherize, weather strip, do some weatherization work in your homes. Um, if you have and need roof repair, we obviously can't do that, but we'll come and check your home out, tell you if there's anything, if you have mold or do need roof repairs, we'll have to have you fix those before we can come and weatherize your home. But on average, we have around $800 to $1,500 of energy savings a year after we're done. So we do blower door tests at the beginning. We'll do cast tests, lead testing, all of that. And then we do it at the end. We can tell you what your energy saving is by the time we leave, after we're all done replacing all that stuff. It's a pretty amazing program. Um, RX for Oklahoma, that's the one you guys have. Oh, I think you guys have one. Um, you guys have a brochure on that. This is an amazing program. If you guys know anybody that is uninsured or underinsured, we can help you get your prescriptions or help you with the cost of your prescriptions. It's an amazing, amazing program. It is funded through Oklahoma Department of Commerce, and we work directly with the pharmaceutical companies to get these prescriptions for you at either no cost or a very small cost. So even if somebody is on Medicare or Medicaid, and let's say they have six punches on their card, but they need eight prescriptions, we can get those other two for you. Amazing, amazing program. Um, I love it. Uh, send as many people as you can, because we can get them taken care of. And so many people have no idea about this program. The next one is the Affordable <coughs> Care Act, better known as Obamacare. We have four certified navigators at our office that can help anybody walk through this program. Um, whether it's getting enrolled and choosing the best plan, we can't get you signed up and tell you what to sign up for, but we can give you all of your options. We also will help you through Insure Oklahoma and every single option you have available as far as insurance. So all you have to do is call, make an appointment, and we will walk through it. We've seen some people fall through the cracks, I'll be honest with you. And we've seen some people get on amazing plans. So, uh, summer food program. I think somebody was talking about somebody not being able to be there. I think through the Methodist Church, I think they, here in Henrietta, you guys have six feeding sites. This is a great program in the summer just because school and learning ends at the end of the year. It, feeding shouldn't have to end with the school year either. Um, a lot of kids have no availability for a hot meal when the school year ends, and so that's something in Oklahoma we also offer. I think it's amazing Henrietta has partnered with um, Feed the Children 
to have those sites. I think I think they have six sites between Henrietta Housing mm -hmm. and all the sites because we try to pass that information. We have a flyer up at our office for people in Henrietta and Dewar. I think has Eagle Heights and maybe one other. Um, we just have the one site for the summer feeding program. We do it all through the month of June and until July 31st. And ours is at Okmulgee Middle School. And it is available for an hour and a half. Anybody the ages 0 to 18 can come get a hot meal for free. It's amazing. We, pa we partner with um, multicultural programs. So we also have um, exercise program and craft program. So they have more to do besides just come get a hot meal. And we have social services. This is a huge encompassing program we do a lot with. We have an air conditioning and a fan program. We help people with deposits and utility bills and um, a number of things, our food pantry. We are kind of like the clearinghouse for all the churches in our area, as well as a couple of the churches down here in Endure. So people don't, I hate to say it any other better way besides work the system. They make them come through us to get the referral to be able to go to the churches. And so people, they have to go, they can only get services so many times a year. If they get to the second time, then they have to go to budgeting classes, nutrition classes, which we also offer at our office. And then they can get their services, but not going through there, they have to learn to budget their money. So amazing things, and I also have grants to where we can help those. Um, I've also applied for an emergency solutions grant to help people from either homelessness or close to homelessness get close to self-sufficiency. And they have to go through amazing courses to get from point A to point B. They can't just, okay, yes, let me pay your bill for you. So that's a big encompassing. It says social services, but there's a lot of aspects with that. Um, homebuyer education and homebuyer assistance. We have some grants through OFA. Currently, we don't have any funds, but um, we do get grants to where we can help with down payment assistance. They must go through home buyer education courses, and we still offer that for several banks um, around, and as well as our self-help housing. They go through a home buyer education course. We are a certified CHODO agency, so they go through that to make sure that they're not just jumping into buying a house, but they don't know to keep their debt ratio. It's, it's a long course. Um, it's an eight-course curriculum that they go through so they can get that home. Pretty amazing thing. We also have tax credit properties through Oklahoma Housing Finance. So that's an all-encompassing helping people so they don't get in over their head, they don't buy a house and then they go buy a new car and they get there to help people keep their credit score up. Um, fingerprinting. This is something that new that we've offered. We did it just to try to keep our revenue up um, when I took over the agency. Some new guidelines that the state has offered Anybody who works with elderly or children have to have not only just a background check, but they have to have a background check with fingerprints. So they can't just go commit a crime here and then let's go to another state and start a new identity. Uh, they have to have a background check with fingerprints and it's a scan, not just what you get at the sheriff's office. So we offer that digital fingerprinting service at our agency and we're just contracted through the company. So they do all of our scheduling, they do everything we just actually perform the fingerprinting for Department of Human Services, um, State Department of Education, Board of Nursing. Um, there's like six agencies you, that we do, do that the for. TSA? Yes. So we do we do all of those. So and anybody for concealed carry, etc. Um, last but not least, we do the VITA income tax preparation. We are certified through the IRS to do taxes for people, anyone who makes 60000 or less. We file the taxes and submit them free of charge to the state and federal, your taxes. It's kind of an amazing program that most, under 60000 60, was the guideline. Last year it was 58000 this year they bumped it up to 60000 And we file, we e-file them for free for anyone. So uh, we do not do itemized returns, but anyone who can do a short form, we do that for free. Pretty amazing program. Um, and then we go into the individual ones. The CACFP, um, again, we cover the whole state. You've got the guidelines for the self-help housing. That one covers seven counties, um, Okmulgee Creek, Okfuskie, Hughes, McIntosh, Muskogee, and Wagner is those to get the self-help housing built. Um, the weatherization, if you look on that slide, it gives you your income guidelines for the weatherization to have your home weatherized. Uh, 
the family size that gives you our income guidelines for the ARCs for Oklahoma. This is such an underutilized program for the ARCs for Oklahoma for the uninsured or underinsured. I, I just can't tell you how many people do not take advantage of this program and I wish they would. We see it's not just for elders, it's for people who are on insulin, it's for people who are on Celebrex. You know, this, this medication is super, super expensive and we have people choosing um, medicine over paying utilities or buying groceries or, and I just, I can't encourage enough to come take advantage of these programs because these income guidelines are fairly high. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's amazing to me. So um, I think I kind of went in detail, and I know we have bulleted slides to kind of refresh your memory here. Um, the income, the taxes, we have an amazing amount of people. I had somebody from Texas come up, and he was, I was like, we have, there's places all over that will do your taxes, and he goes, not for free. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're still doing, we've extended our taxes clear to October 15th, and we'll still do them even though you know a lot of people have filed extensions and we've got a lady that's a certified CPA that volunteers for our agency and she does them we've done a couple 2012s so people have filed extensions and have to do some stuff and so she will do a lot of the more intricate taxes you just have to call and make an appointment and she'll do them um, any questions you have for me I know I'm not from Oklahoma so I'll talk a little faster than than most people would probably like. Um, I know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My board members don't like that either. So, yeah. Um, I have a question. Yes. I do Medicare insurance. That's what I do for a living. So, when you were talking about the RX program, I see it every single day that people are trying to decide this. And even people that have good insurance. They've got their Medicare or they have a you know a supplement plan, it doesn't once you get that dollar amount, it doesn't work. Yep. So are you um you think because normally when we try and help them, the pharmaceutical companies tell us if you have insurance, <coughs> you can't. And so I've got people that can't afford their insulin. They're I'm mean, going through this exact same thing because their insulin's five hundred dollars a month or something. Um you still think that you guys can help? Uh, a lot of times we have. That's why my RX coordinator works directly with doctor offices, doctors' offices, and hospitals to try to get that covered. Okay. I thought it's kind of a break my heart. I mean, just if you'll give me your card, mm -hmm. I will give it to my RX person, and she can coordinate with you, and we'll see what we can do to help. Perfect. Awesome. Good. We used to have an office in Henrietta. It was down on. Uh, between 6th and 7th on the south side of the road. And back then, I, I, with the Lions Club, we have an eyeglass program, a vision health program. And we've always done uh, children. And, and But for years, Deepport Community Action had a certain amount of discretionary funds. And if, if we had an adult come to us for eyeglasses, I could send them down there and they'd get some help. And then that just dried up. So I was wondering if Deepport are all your funds discretionary or do you have some undiscretion? All of our funds we have to account for. We used to have a lot of discretionary, like. That's what I was asking. Did that go away? So you don't. Yes. We used to have some that I would be able to just say, oh, we can take it out of this pot because I, it was like local funds or um, discretionary money that I could just do with what I needed to because that came out of donations. Um, with the economy the way it is, um, I think that's why those donations just ceased probably. Um, we have very little. And we do get donations that come in, but they want it to go towards their county and towards emergency assistance, towards rent and utilities. So a lot of people will earmark what they want their donations to go for. Um, we used to have, under previous administration, they would have fundraisers. But I found when I took over and I did audits, I, you know, we had a pretty in-depth. Um, and our funding sources came in. If we were not allowed to pay the staff to do those fundraisers during 
business hours. So I had to take all of that time and pay all of that out of those discretionary funds and pay it back to those grants. And so that's what took up a lot of that discretionary funds. And so where we are today, those discretionary funds, they're usually earmarked. And so I, that is one problem that I have is I get a lot of calls. I can't tell you how many calls I get for eyeglasses. And I have no resources for them. Okay, okay, I can, just individuals. We write a couple grants, like Service League gives us funds, um, and we write one to East Central, and we do fans and air conditioners, because when we do a, we do a community needs assessment, every two years we're required and we come up with the needs that we have in our communities and that we have no funds for um, that came up like fifth on our list and so we haven't wrote a grant from any place to be able to request that um, yet if it, if it moves up higher but we keep track of how many we have per year like Every, we have call logs and we keep track of every request and every person. Plus we keep everything in a database called Captain. And so we've used a lot of our funds and we know where everything goes to. Um, but that would be something we just haven't been able to do. And we use emergency services. 